I've been reading books of old, the legends and the myths, Achilles and his gold, Achilles and his gifts, and Spider-Man's control, and Batman with his fist. And clearly I don't see myself upon that list, but she said, where do you want to go? Hey guys, Ron for Function Build Aquatics. Happy 4th of July. It's been a while since I've actually done a fish room tour. Months, I would say. I made quite a few changes in the room. So, I took advantage of the 4th of July holiday a long weekend. And I'm going to show you some of the changes we've made. New additions. Some of the fry updates. Spawning updates. And so on. As you know, the majority of the fish that I keep are wild betta fish. In my fish room, I currently have about 38 tanks, and I'm not including um, one gallon jars, which I don't use many of. And I would say a good 35 to at least 36 of the 38 tanks are all wild bettas. So the rack you're staring at right now is a rack that I just recently reconfigured. What I was trying to do is get the most out of the space I was using. This was the rack that had the two 20 gallon highs and the 33. I have since changed everything and added a 20 gallon long up top right next to the 33. Three, ga three 10 gallon tanks on the bottom row. The 20 gallon high will soon be replaced with three more 10 gallon tanks giving me three individual setups to store and house separate pairs or separated wild bettas. I have really come to appreciate 10 gallon tanks and their usage. I love to put male wild bettas and female wild bettas in their own 10 gallon tanks. Thus it allows me to actually put the fish together when I'm ready to spawn them and I can control the spawnings. It seems like once these fish actually get settled in and turned on, some fish are rather difficult to breed and some will breed nonstop. So the 33 gallon tank, as you see in the top row, that is my Bleeding Heart Tetra setup and my Cory Cats. This is one of the few tanks I have where there are no wild betta fish in the tank. Down below, I'm utilizing three 10 gallon tanks on the right hand side are my Betta Forshi collection. Let me see if I can get a little closer to one of them that's actually out. That is one of my male Betta Forshi. Currently looking to gobble up some white worms I recently just put in the tanks to get them out in the open. This is a 10 gallon paludarium type setup. And this tank actually houses two of my female breeder rubras, the males are in separate tanks. This 10 gallon tank is for all my Betta Hendra grow outs. There are close to 65 or maybe even 70 Betta Hendra in this tank. I know it seems like a lot of Hendra in one setup, but I do my weekly water changes, changing 50% of the water. I feed them mostly live, which also cuts back on waste as far as food that's not eaten. And so far they're not shredding each other or showing any aggression overall. Crowded like this, they will get along and will and you know this is not the ideal type of setup, but these guys are actually all sold and are all going to be shipping out pretty much early next week. This 20 gallon high is where my adult breeder Betta Hendra are. They have actually spawned quite a few times in this tank, but the best tank that they spawned in overall when I, was, when I first got the Hendra would have been the 10 gallon tank that had a lot of floating plants. I had Amazon, sword, uh, Amazon frog bit, duckweed, and what I like to do is I like to actually stick flower pots on the side of the glass. And this tank I have three pots on the side, giving my male bed a his choice of pot, which pot he wants to lure the female into to give me some more fry before these guys eventually stop breeding at some point. Now I've had them for over two years and they have 
produced well over 100 fry, probably close to maybe 200 to be exact. Top tank right here, my Beta Ocelata Terracon pair. These guys have been separated since I imported them about three months ago. And now I'm trying to get them together, trying to get some fry from them. It seems like in the room the past week ago, the past week that just, you know, this just went by, it seemed like all my ocelata were turned on at the same time. I'll get to that ocelata rack in a minute, but all those fish in that particular rack spawned at the exact same time. So something must have been in the air or even in the water. And since these guys were separated, I figured I might as well take advantage of it and see what we can get out of them. They're in a 20 gallon high up top. I usually use the spawning mops to give me some added cover. My lights are pretty dim, so only a certain plants will actually grow in tanks like this. So this is where I utilize spawning mops to give the fish cover to dive into if they feel threatened. Also, fry love to hide in these spawning mops, which is great for rearing out fry. I use them in some of my fry tanks, especially after the first week. Down below is my 40 gallon breeder for my beta macrostoma. This tank originally was going to be set up for the pair, but the female has proven to be a little bit of an issue, and the male obviously is not mature yet. So I'm going to allow the male to mature in this tank for a while. And the female is actually cooling her heels in a 10 gallon tank. In time, I will try again putting them together. I'm just not willing to risk her killing him just to get them to spawn. I got plenty of time for them to give me what I want, but I'd rather keep them for a very, very, very long time. Top row is exactly nine 10 gallon tanks straight across. This is why I love 10 gallon tanks. 10 gallon tanks are extremely useful for single and in some instances pairs of wild bettas. I'm going to go from the right to the left. My male betta Palafena Montoy. This is one of my juvenile. Unamaculata Wahoo. I just pulled this guy out. He's going to be one of my future breeders. He was the fastest to grow and actually shows amazing color. Right now he's kind of looking like a chick, but he's been fighting with his siblings next, next to him. I might have to put something to divide their, their view. This is the batch he actually came from, and of course he grew really quick and outgrew those guys. This tank are my Beta Rubra and Beta Chinoides Fry. Actually, I should say juveniles. There are quite a bit Chinoides and about seven or eight Rubra. They seem to be getting along pretty well. And the 10 gallon tank for this instance turns out to be a fantastic tank to grow these guys out. They are the last of my Chinoides from my original pair I imported over three years ago. These are my Beta Mahakiensis, and I already had to pull one of my young males out that was sparring with another male in here, so these guys are getting to the point where they're eventually going to have to be separated. They're kind of white and light colored right now because of the white painted tank that they're in, but usually when they're put in something dark, they color up really nice. Some of these guys are actually showing some promising blue coloration and not the turquoise green that the parents currently have. The parents are imported wild Mahakiensis from Thailand, and these guys are my F1s. This is my male Beta Unamaculata Wahoo. That is one of his offspring. These are one of many of his offsprings. And this is my man who's actually produced probably more fry for me only second to my male Antuta, who currently resides with Paul Vitavo, and I heard last time is doing wonders for him. My Unamaculata Wahoo in this tank is actually chilling out and recovering from spitting out 80 fry. I have three tanks with fry, two five and a halfs and one 10 gallon tank just from him 
and a female that I'll show you shortly. This is my long humbung pair. My awesome male and female. These guys have already spawned. I have about 15 of their fry. I haven't gotten any more spawnings from them since, but that will happen in time. This is my female beta macrostoma. She's the nasty one who separated from the male. She's an awesome fish, recently imported. Also a joint venture with a friend of mine, Paul Vitavo. We brought in pairs together and I took this one particular pair. This is an empty 10 gallon tank just waiting for somebody who's holding fry. Down below here is a recent move. I just moved this Ocelata South Malloy Basin. He was actually sitting in a 20 gallon high with a female and I noticed he was getting ready to spit. He was cruising the tank. So I'm trying to recover as many of the fry as possible. So this will be a tank where he'll actually spit his fry, recuperate, and eventually go back with the female. And I anticipate that they will spawn pretty much right away. These are the three gallon Zoomed Bulgariums. On the left hand side, Beta Wojak. And on the right hand side are a pair of Beta Hendra that I chose out of my spawnings. I'm going to probably try to import a couple females just to get some fresh blood in them into my Hendra bloodline. I'm trying my best to make sure that the fish are not crossbred and uh, line bred for instance. Going back to the Beta Mahakiensis, you might be able to see, here you go, here's a young male. Now he's not really showing, there's another male in the top right hand corner. Uh, these guys are, are when I walked away earlier, they were dark because they were battling, so they're showing their top color. They were showing some really, really dark blue. So I would love to see if I can get some blues out of toy, turquoise parents. I don't know how that works genetically, but this one right here, you can't tell by the lighting. But they're showing some promise. This is my last of my Albi Marginata pair. This is my male. Sorry for the glare, guys. It's really hard. A lot of light pollution in here. There you go. Hang in there with me. I'll do my best to try to eliminate some of the light pollution. And the female's probably hiding somewhere. She's actually pretty beefy. Extremely tough. So she, I don't know how that male puts up with her, but he does. That middle tank are some of the killifish I received from a killifish convention. And these are aphysimian. This five and a half gallon tank is my breeder pair of wild beta, beta embellus. These guys spawn every single week. Down below are fry tanks. On the right hand side is 80 Beta Unamaculata Wahoo fry from my above mentioned male. He's given me hundreds of fry. Better Pitoti Fry. Another group of the Better Unamaculata Wahoo. These guys are Better Unamaculata Long Humbung from my other pair I mentioned up top. This is probably the only one gallon cube I run. This also has a pair of killifish. Chinese mountain stream set up. That was my wife, Bow Garden Video. It's a family adventure. Uh, this is my sanctuary, but open to all. This is the Chinese mountain stream set up that Nathan and I set up over four, almost three and a half years ago. I'm sorry, maybe close to four. Uh, Nathan actually did a little cutting on it, did a little bit too much, 
on the left hand side of your uh, of your screen but um, in time that'll grow in fifty five gallon tank where I keep an assorted group of Unamaculata complex females. These are all females that will get along and actually have done pretty well. In this tank there are three female Antuta, one female Patoti, one female Palafina, two young Antuta that I'm growing out for future spawnings. As you can tell, wild bedders are jumpers. That right there is one of my awesome male Beta Antuta. Very good fish. He's in there with all his fry. Very good father. This fish is actually thick as a cigar. He's big enough to eat dubia roaches full size. And he's got an appetite to match bulldozer as I call him. that's my man right there full mask beautiful 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 Antuta and he was one of the first Antuta that I imported from Indonesia this is a rack which holds up top female Unamaculata Wahoo who actually has spawned with the other Wahoo male and has produced with with the only wahoo male I should say that I, I have ready that's that's ready for breeding and these guys have produced hundreds of fry like I mentioned before this little two and a half gallon tank is currently holding a small group of Hendra that I recently took out of the parents tank and grow them out this will be my third generation that a Hendra Nathan set up a little rack for us to keep all our dry foods on. These are all the foods that we use on a regular basis. But my number one source for live food is either earthworm or white worms. I have a very big culture of white worms, but I do not sell cultures. I have enough for me to run my room, and with almost 40 tanks, sometimes I wonder if it's even enough. In this tank right here, I currently have Beta Unamaculata Milak. These came from one of my adult, of course, Milak pairs I imported two years ago and have actually done rather well with them. It took a little while for them to spawn, but once they did, they gave me really good groups. Bottom tank is my male Beta Patoti, and he's actually probably hiding behind one of, he, actually, he likes to hide behind a heater. Big fan of earthworms. He likes me for, he likes me to cut them in half, and he's almost as big as the beta antuta I showed you a minute ago. Let's see if we can get a little close up of my main man bulldozer. He's got amazing turquoise color. He's being shy right now. He's sort of blocking, blocking my view of him. What are you gonna do? They have their own personalities. All right, let's move on. This is my 20 gallon high that I use to, to store my Beta Unamaculata Milok pair. These guys have been courting an awful lot in the past few days. I've been feeding them live worms, which typically helps with females producing eggs, high protein, live foods. Good source if you want your fish to spawn. Earthworms and even white worms are great for these type of fish. These guys took a while to breed, like I mentioned prior, but they finally got it done. Good to go. This is my stud male, Beta Palafina Montoy. Sorry for the algae growth on the glass. These guys are actually due next for a water change. Come on, buddy. I know you're always curious. He's awesome. He's got really nice copper and brown tones to him. There you go. Very aggressive, very aggressive fish. They're a very, very, very aggressive subspecies of Unamaculata. At least this guy is. 
This particular rack right here is my Beta Ocelata rack. This is the Ocelata rack I mentioned prior that actually the, all these fish spawned on the same day in the you know of course in the same week. So it seemed like something was in the air in this one corner of the room. We finally got these guys to spawn. The top right hand corner is where I removed the mail to put in that five and a half gallon tank. This video is going to be a long one because I have a lot of stuff to talk about here. This is a 75 gallon tank that I divided with a Berlin Matten filter with two discharges, one on each side. And the other one's on uh, the other one's on the other side. There you go. The other one's on the other side. Now this type of filter is a great way to divide a tank and filter at the same time. I was able to get Swiss Tropicals to actually drill the sponge all the way down to the core in the middle, allowing me to do just that. It was cut to fit a 75 gallon tank perfect and all these young juvies are all sold and it will be shipping out next week. These guys are our Beta Antuta and this is another batch of Beta Antuta. These are all, these are actually part of Bulldozer's babies and then another male Antuta I shipped out to a friend of mine in California who uh, says he's doing fantastic with it. Our giant Garami and the other 75 gallon tank And that's pretty much it. So thanks for enjoying and watching. I hope you enjoyed it, I should say. I'm kind of, kind of running out of words right now. But this is a fish room update for Function Build Aquatics. Please subscribe, please like, please comment. Any questions, hit us up. You want to know anything about wild betta fish, if I can help, I will. If I, can't, if I don't know it, I will find it for you. We are pretty heavy in the Unamaculata complex. Uh, I do enjoy some of the other wild bettas, but, but I'm currently enjoying Unamaculata the most. Thank you very much, guys. Please subscribe. Function Build Aquatics. Oh, I want something just like